You guys ever peeked inside your game console, whether it's a Nintendo, Sega, PlayStation, Xbox, retro system from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, whatever, and you've seen some electronics in there, and you're always kind of curious as to what the heck is going on in there. How does that work? If you've ever asked yourself that question and you weren't really into that field, but you were always curious, in today's video, I'm going to be explaining some of that, and I'm going to talk to you guys a bit about some of the big changes that happen in the industry for electronics design through the 90s and into the 2000s. So that's today's video. Let's get started. Here we go. Today's launch day for my merch, capacitor mugs. Any tech, engineer, computer tinkerer, programmer, you're gonna want one of these on your bench or on your desk. And I've got uh, some uh, water tumblers, water bottle tumblers, coffee, you put your coffee in there too. Different types of mugs, I got hats, I got t-shirts, I got hoodies. So you can feel free to snag a shot of the QR code here on screen. Uh, however, the link is also in the description for you. But in today's video, I wanna to talk to you guys a bit about the electronics uh, used in retro gaming consoles, game development equipment, uh, in, in, in all equipment throughout the you know late 80s, 90s, 2000s, and some of the big changes that happened there uh, during that time. Let's take a look at uh, a console here. So here we have like a Nintendo from 1985. Inside that machine, you have some of the fundamental digital components that came out that are called 7400 series logic devices or integrated circuits. So now these devices, they contain different types of logic switches referred to as logic gates. And at the core level, they're essentially a, a switching transistor, right? It's the very, very core fundamental component of all electronics, right? And uh, essentially they created different types of these logic gates. And when you connect these in different combinations in a circuit, you're able to create some really sophisticated uh, digital logic uh, processing circuits and uh, essentially there's eight separate types of these logic gate switches that they created. A logic gate is a digital switching device that receives inputs, performs an operation and then outputs a result. For example, an AND gate turns its output on only if all its inputs are on. An inverter or NOT gate turns its output on only if the input is off. By combining these, we can create a NAND gate, which turns its output on only when all inputs are off. Other logic gates include OR, NOR, XOR and XNOR, each with different logical functions. By using these logic gates in different combinations, Chip designers are able to create all the many different types of digital processing components we use today. So now a circuit board design, such as a game console, uh, usually designers would break this up into blocks or modules. So as an example, you would have an area of the circuit board is dedicated to voltage and power processing or voltage regulation. Uh, you would have an area of the circuit board dedicated to sound and audio processing. You would also have an area of the board that's dedicated for processing graphics. And uh, you also run into situations where you're converting from an analog signal to a digital signal. And they use special devices called ADCs or analog to digital converters. And you can also go back uh, from a digital to an analog signal and that's performed using a DAC, a digital to analog converter. Now, when we're talking about digital electronics design, it's important to realize that integrated circuits, they've been around for quite a while. They were first created in the late 50s, early 60s. And so they've been used in digital circuit design for quite a while. Now, uh, during the late 70s and during the 80s, they started using what was called uh, programmable logic devices and these were called PALs 
as well as GALS. Now these devices were fantastic for digital design during that time. However, you move forward a little bit and into the mid 80s and into the 90s, they started using what was called complex programmable logic devices or CPLDs. Now what made the CPLD device such a huge game changer uh, in terms of uh, digital circuitry design, normally a designer would make a, a specific type of digital circuit and all the interconnections to each of those little devices and those gates, those logic switches, had to be made uh, using a circuit board layout, right? So it was a very time consuming, tedious process. And if a, if a change had to be made, well, that was a very costly you know, thing to do. Now, whereas with a CPLD, the interconnections between logic gates were made using code. If this does not blow your mind, you have no emotion. <laughs> this was such a huge game changer. And each of these CPLD devices provided different number of, of programmable logic gates, right? To make all these different interconnections. So you had thousands of logic gates that were available. So then now the code that you write for a CPLD device is actually the instructions of where you want interconnections made between all the logic gates inside this device. That's the real difference. And this is why when you program uh, a device like a CPLD or an FPGA, uh, it uses what's called a hardware description language. And when you think about it, that's because you're actually making physical connections uh, in, in hardware. In the past, this had to be done using circuit board layout and making all those interconnections and those traces between all the different devices and interconnecting all those logic gates. However, with the CPLD, to make an interconnection change, all you have to do is go and make a code change and then perform an update uh, by reprogramming this device. The second feature that was really sought after was the programming interface that these devices provided, and that was known as ISP or in-system programming. And this was a dedicated four to 10 pin uh, interface that was directly embedded as part of the chip. This was known as JTAG. There was a specific feature of JTAG that allowed you to connect a USB programming pod. And this was known as the USB blaster. And so you would simply connect this, this programming device directly to the pins on the chip. And then using a proprietary software, you could program your logic design onto that CPLD while it was in circuit. So the chip would be embedded on a circuit board as a part of a final design. And you could then go and use this JTAG interface and interconnect that to an existing design of a board design. And you could go and reprogram a CPLD device uh, to make changes. So as an example, doing firmware updates. This was just a huge game changer uh, for design engineers during that time. So that's today's video, everybody. I hope you found that uh, educational and informative. Digital electronics is just a fascinating field and it's so interesting and using the different components and they're constantly innovating and things are just happening so fast, but it's so cool to look back and see how you know they did things and the changes that have happened over the years. And the retro tech from the 90s is just so cool. I love it so much. So in next week's video, uh, I want to show you guys digital circuit where we're actually going to go and program an Altera CPLD device. Program it to drive a seven segment LCD display. And this is just like a proof of concept to show you how it works and how you can program your own design onto these small digital devices and uh, be able to create some really cool and fun digital electronics projects. Just so fun, so cool, and they're just a great learning tool. So that'll be uh, coming up, that'll be in uh, next week's video, and I'm really excited to do that with you guys. So that's today's video, everybody. Uh, please leave a comment. Uh, let me know if you guys have any insights of your own or if you have projects you're working on. If it's game related, that's even a bonus. That's super cool, super fun. So thanks again for watching, everybody. Hit the like and subscribe if you can. It's always appreciated. And we will see you in the next video. Take it easy and bye for now. Ciao.